Okay, so I've been quiet for uh, a couple of days here, and I figured I'd uh, start my uh, project of the week uh, with uh, something that might be useful. I bought, I built it for a different use, but uh, I'll uh, I'll show it to you right now. And uh, what it is is a uh, a propane heater element stand. Well, I don't know what you want to call it. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. Uh, it's a propane heater stand. And uh, it's fairly strip, simple and straightforward. What it is, is this is a uh, tank-mounted uh, propane heater uh, that I, uh, I basically, I took the mounting bracket off and, uh, and uh, tack welded. No, actually, no, I, I bolted it in there. Um, bolted it into the, uh, to a fairly simple bracket arrangement and a uh, post that I can uh, adjust the height on. I cut slots in it with, uh, with a chop saw and just have a little movable piece here to set the, uh, the height. Uh, I haven't never got around to putting a spring on it to uh, join these two locations and all that. And uh, basically it was originally set up to uh, use with casters, but uh, like casters, every caster in this place eventually gets pulled off and used for something else. Um, it's set up so that uh, the whole kit and caboodle will move uh, as one unit. There's a little bracket that the uh, propane tank fits neatly into. And there's a uh, six foot uh, extension hose, actually ten foot extension hose, uh, that uh, connects it all. That's all, uh, so it's all, you know, safe and, and, uh, and such for, uh, for uh, you to use. Now, Originally what I built this uh, unit for was uh, a couple of years ago I was, I, I was really into powder coating a lot. Uh, I think powder coating does a fairly decent job but uh, I kind of became less enamored with it because uh, it didn't seem to really provide the protection that I was always led to believe it did. I was finding stuff was rusting out underneath it and uh, stuff I properly prepared, you know, sandblasted. Uh, treated with uh, with a, a metal ready kind of a thing, a phosphate solution, and uh, properly rinsed and and then powder coated immediately. And I was finding stuff was still rusting out on me, so I wasn't too happy with that. And the intention was that I was going to use this as a portable unit to uh, heat up uh, pieces of metal that were too big to fit in a conventional oven. The idea was I was going to do things like my core support, and I was going to do the frame for this truck using that. I did some initial test runs with it, and I found that it was kind of inadequate for the task. Uh, it just didn't put out enough heat. This is about 17,000 BTUs, and uh, it simply, I, I never actually ever got it up to the recommended uh, metal temperature to do powder coating, which was somewhere in the order of 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So anyway, so what I'm using this for now is what it was originally intended for, which is uh, a heater. And uh, I'm just doing a little experiment right now to see if uh, what kind of a net effect that this thing will have in my shop right now. Now, uh, when I came in here, the temperature was uh, four degrees Celsius, or about, I guess that would be just under 40, 38 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, now it looks like it's come up to just around five, or just over 40. Uh, considering the fact that the temperature is dropping outside, it's about zero Celsius and uh, or 32 Fahrenheit. Uh, it's not too bad. In any case, uh, hopefully somebody will find this useful. It's uh, kind of like a variable height uh, patio heater is essentially what it is. Uh, might be able to find something cheaper elsewhere, but I like it. Okay, I thought I'd just give you one final comment uh, on the unit. Now the pipe is about six feet tall. It's not really critical. You can make it however tall you want it to. But one thing that I thought was a good idea was the heater's on one side of the post and the uh, tank is on the opposite side. So it kind of offsets the fact that you have a moderate amount of weight, you know, hanging off on a little lever on this side. So it's, it uh, kind of balances out and makes it, uh, well, not very tippy. So just another little point I thought was worth mentioning. Okay, and uh, one final, final comment uh, about my test. Um, this thing had been running for about 45 minutes, and uh, uh, 17,000 BTUs really isn't enough to, to make a big impact in here 
was only up about a degree Celsius uh, after that 45 minutes. So obviously 17, I knew 17,000 wasn't going to be enough, but I wanted to get some idea of uh, of just what kind of a net effect it might have. Uh, what I was originally shooting for was about 88,000 BTUs uh, for one of those torpedo heaters, but I've uh, got to figure out if that's what I want or not. Uh, I wanted to run, get one of the kerosene-fired ones and run it on diesel since I've got a ready supply of diesel here because I'm on a farm. And uh, I'd heard they were quite stinky, so I might have to see if I can find somebody with one so I can see what they're like. Okay, that is actually it for the day.